Will Bangladesh take over the number one booming economy spot from China? Is China's economy crashing? Will China remain number one? Hi guys, welcome once again to the Wealth Lab. China's rapid and sustained growth is probably the best example of a successful economic model and policy. Much of its growth is attributed to increased efficiency in all sectors, from technology to agriculture and large-scale capital investments. Let's not forget the country's exemplary economic reforms and the increasing reliance on SOEs, state-owned enterprises. They have helped the country gain a stronghold in the global market. Today, it is the top contender to replace the USA as the global superpower. That's no easy feat to accomplish. But it seems like China will soon get larger competition as its neighbor Bangladesh is on its way to become the next big thing on the economic front. So, can we say that Bangladesh will become the new China? Well, the chances are bright that it'll become something similar. Enjoying this video so far? Remember to hit that subscribe and like button. Okay, let's get back to the video. In the past few years, Economic comparisons between China and its bordering countries usually yielded a fixed hierarchy where China took the lead, Bangladesh at the bottom, and India sandwiched in between them. However, the situation took a 180 degree turn after the coronavirus pandemic. The pandemic's shocking economic outcomes resulted in creating a unique situation in terms of the current fiscal year's growth figures. Believe it or not, the International Monetary Fund is projecting that Bangladesh's gross domestic product will overtake India's GDP. Now that's a huge shock. It is unbelievable that a country that a few years back was nowhere in the race to economic stardom and now has stepped into a new journey after it qualified to graduate into a developing nation. For the past 45 years, Bangladesh remained in the category of a lesser developed country. The United Nations Committee for Development Policy, also known as the UNCDP, has recommended Bangladesh's graduation, and the country is scheduled to become a developing country in 2026 officially. For the second time, it has met all three eligibility criteria for graduation regarding Human Assets Index, Income Per Capita, and Environmental Vulnerability Index. It will get five years instead of three, to prepare for this transition, given the pandemic's impact on this emerging economy. So until 2026, Bangladesh will keep enjoying the trade benefits as an LDC. This is a huge development that came when Bangladesh is celebrating 50 years of its independence. The IMF believes Bangladesh is very likely to surpass India as far as economic growth is concerned. That will be a huge shock to India. And China also has every reason to strengthen its ties with Bangladesh. And this is actually happening. Since 1971, India has remained Bangladesh's major trading partner. But from 2004 onwards, China's trade with Bangladesh has increased many fold. In fact, trade between China and Bangladesh has now surpassed the trade between India and Bangladesh. In 1975, Bangladesh was classified by the UN as one of the world's least developed countries. But its current trajectory indicates that this description will most likely be shed by as early as 2024. That's because Bangladesh has shown tremendous economic growth over the years. The number of employed workers living below the poverty line has dropped significantly in a decade. It was 73.5% in 2010, and by 2018, it had dropped to 10.4%. Graduating from least developed country status is a sure shot sign that Bangladesh's per capita gross national income, resilience to environmental and economic shocks, and human assets are robust enough to allow sustainable development and progress. Bangladesh was ranked 105th in the 2019 Global Competitive Report from the World Economic Forum. You must already know that the more competitive a country is, the more likely its living standards will improve. So can we give them credit for this sudden and rapid economic boom in the Bangladeshi garment industry? We sure can do that, because the country's garment trade began in the early 1970s, and now has evolved into a $30 billion industry. However, we can't overlook the fact that Bangladesh's economy is diversifying big time. Enjoying this video so far? 
Remember to hit that subscribe and like button. Okay, let's get back to the video. The service sector, which includes IT, computing, and microfinance, collectively makes up around 53% of its GDP. The IT's industry success is central to the ongoing economic growth as well as the digital transformation of Bangladesh. The country exports roughly $1 billion of technology products annually. While the government expects to increase this figure to $5 billion by the end of 2021, it also has over 600,000 IT freelancers. So we can say that Bangladesh is witnessing a boom in almost every leading sector. This achievement results from the country's relentless planning, hard work, and efforts over the last 12 years. In the October 2020 edition of the IMF's World Economic Outlook, it was reported that India's per capita GDP for fiscal year 2021 is at $1,877, in nominal terms. This figure records a 10.5% drop in annual GDP, compared to the 4% growth recorded by Bangladesh, touching $1,888 per capita GDP. Compared to Bangladesh and India, China's per capita GDP in 2020 was estimated at 10839 as per the IMF report. The report penciled in Bangladesh and China's growth figures at 3.8% and 2.1%. That's astounding, as Bangladesh's growth figures are higher than China's. This strengthens the belief that Bangladesh will be the new China in the near future. While China's economy soared ahead in the late 90s, its success could be attributed to the quick scaling of its manufacturing sector and export-oriented foreign direct investment policies. In contrast, Bangladesh's focus is sharply on its textile sector, as it has given the country a strong competitive edge in terms of export. India too benefited considerably from export-oriented growth, but its policy orientation was inwardly focused, which means to say its main target was the domestic market. So why is Bangladesh's economy booming despite COVID? That's a question that we should be more concerned about. Bangladesh has maintained a positive economic growth rate compared to other and even significantly larger developed economies like India. The country has been doing exceedingly well in terms of macroeconomic performance, primarily because it didn't experience any balance of payment shocks within the past 30 years. So macroeconomic stability is one of its founding cornerstones as it helped keep the country's growth process sustained. Furthermore, it has maintained exchange rate stability. So in dollar terms, there's a growth acceleration in Bangladesh as the change of stability factor is underpinned by a strong macro foundation. Moreover, Bangladesh's macroeconomic performance also reflects the government's prudent fiscal management. Bangladesh's fiscal deficit is much under control as it has remained between 3.5 to 4.5%. Generally, we've seen that when fiscal targets are set at 5%, the outrun is always less than the fiscal target. That's not the case with Bangladesh. So we can say that's a strong performance and anchors the country's strong performance regarding inflationary and exchange rate stability. Promising solid external sector developments, such as exports, which the country has always excelled in, are also a significant contributor to its sustainable growth during the pandemic. In the past 30 years, Bangladeshi exports have recorded double-digit growth, while remittances have served as a counter-cyclical factor. Even during the pandemic, Bangladesh's remittance remained at an all-time high. This helped the industrial sector a lot, as they could pay their workers when they were out of work through an allotment of cheap credit paid directly to their bank or cash account. Compared to 2019 figures, remittances have reportedly increased by 20%. It has acted as a solid shock absorber for the country's economic system and the rural economy. So its export performance, the private sector's resilience in the domestic economy, and remittance performance are all factors that have led to an impressive outcome during the pandemic. Even though Bangladesh has seen considerable demand contraction in garment exports, it is still its most robust sector. It happened because most chains of stores and retailers in North America and Europe were shut for many months. This led to a 20% decrease in demand. 
Still, the country's economic performance has been laudable, since it isn't as down as India or China as far as the ready-made garment sector is concerned. Many Bangladesh sectors are doing reasonably well, while sectors like travel or hotels are suffering, as is the case worldwide. Another factor is that Bangladesh isn't one of those countries hit the most by COVID-19. The impact of the disease and the death rate in the country is relatively minimal. For your information, Bangladesh reported 388,569 confirmed COVID cases and 5,660 deaths. On the other hand, China and India were severely hit by the virus, with China being the virus's epicenter. So naturally, its economy suffered the most. Companies are moving away from China, and Bangladesh is among the top three countries where buyers are turning to the most, the other two being Indonesia and India. Hence, the post-COVID scenario is quite promising for Bangladesh if it can attract new buyers and diversify its economy. There's every chance that Bangladesh can improve the World Bank doing business indicator and infrastructure development barometer. If this happens, Bangladesh will be able to turn around on the FDI front, which hasn't been too bright for the country so far. Enjoying this video so far? Remember to hit that subscribe and like button. Okay, let's get back to the video. Bangladesh has undergone immense improvement in health, education, life expectancy, and infant mortality aspects, which has driven growth and reduced economic vulnerability. We can confidently state that Bangladesh is a success story all the way. And with all that being said, I'll see you in the next video.